Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here today. Actually, I'm out standing in my bean field. Wouldn't you say that, Adder? Sure. I'm here today with uh, Editor Cameron. How are you, Cameron? Good. And Adam Queen. And you are uh, soybean. What What is your title, Adam? So I am a field biologist with Syngenta CP, um, mainly looking after seed treatment technologies. And we're in a, a unusual case here. Actually, we're in probably what, what I like to call uh, sudden death syndrome headquarters right here. Wouldn't you call it that, Adam? It's uh, it's a good spot. We'll put it that way. We're actually, actually this is my brother's farm, but my farm is just right 10 feet away. And uh, it was identified here about uh, seven or eight years ago. And what we've ended up doing is is putting plots here to screen for either varieties. This this particular plot is for, well, Adam, tell us about it. So what we're trying to do here, Dennis, is uh, we're screening some of our upcoming technology, comparing it to our existing technology um, for performance on sudden death syndrome. And so it's, as you mentioned, it's a good spot in terms of the fact that we have relatively good and consistent pressure. And so it's actually kind of interesting now because uh, here we are at July 28th and we're already starting to see some symptoms. So normally I get out and I start taking notes for sudden death syndrome sometime late August. Uh, for some reason this year it's shown up a lot earlier. And so yeah, so my main role is to try and uh, basically assess the differences between these seed treatments and put together registration packages in order to make sure that we bring new technologies to growers to help them combat the problem. So that's, uh, that's what we're up to here today. So what you're doing in this plot, you're using uh, a single variety? Sing so a single variety, yeah. And so this is actually a really unique site here because, you know, working with the Jackson family and give you guys credit, it's been awesome working with you guys because here we are, as you mentioned, on your brother's farm. And here I am screening seed treatment technology. And then if you turn around, here we are screening genetics. Um, 10 feet in away. In a different, and in your field. So this is a really awesome experience for us to be able to do this. Um, and both be able to bring seed treatment as well as genetic technology to the market there too. Well, I first found sudden death here. Mm -hmm. NK had a plot across the road for white mold. Exactly. Because this is also white mold central. Fair enough. And, and the reason we have a lot of white mold, we used to grow a lot of seed corn. And so we always had soybeans for a buffer. Right. Then in the off year, it was soybeans. So it, there was a few acres on that corner of that farm ended up being soybeans on soybeans and the white mold build up. So, and I can't think of the girl's name. I would have been Marika. Marika. Yeah, Van, uh, Van Andelen now. And I thought it was white mold that I had. So I go over, Marika was over there. I went over and seen her and said, hey, can you come over and look at my white mold? Yeah. We go over there and she says, no, you haven't got white mold. You got sudden death. And that's was the beginning of the end of, for me. <laughs> Fair enough. And well, the other thing to keep in mind there too is there's a really close link between sudden death syndrome and soybean cyst nematode. And so when we have beans on beans on beans, we see sudden, uh, soybean cyst nematode pressure starting to build. It, it probably it's a combination. Yep. Because what the uh, cysts do is, is they uh, cause stress on the plant mm -hmm. and then sudden death comes. Well, keep in mind there too, so, uh, soybean cyst nematode, they'll penetrate the root. And it's that penetration that allows the pathogen to enter into the root system early season. And that's what causes these late season symptoms for sudden death syndrome. What I'm going to try to do is come back here on Tuesday sure. and I'll meet up with Matt Hoyer. Yep. And uh, we'll go over to the other, I guess we'll call it range, yep. where the genetics are. Yep. And we'll have a look at the different varieties. And this plot right here, and it's kind of early to see sudden death it's just starting to show up so and I, I can see a few over there yeah i can take you over and show you some of yeah let's dogs. go have a look we'll see some of the early signs so here here's a really good example of what happens with sudden death syndrome and so this is a highly emotional disease as you know there dennis because i mean the only ways to control this are through genetics seed treatment and rotation and once you have it as a grower it's yours. It's yours, and you can't do anything about it at this time of the year. There's no foliar applications or anything that we can do. So um, that's why it's important, you know, that we bring new technologies to the marketplace to try and make sure that we combat this. And I mean, here's an example here too of where it's getting worse. But I mean, you look at these plants, 
And here we are at July 29th, right? Yep. And here we are, July 29th. We're starting to see these kind of foliar symptoms, and they're just going to progress. And, and they're aborting. And all of a sudden, the plant's going to die. Yep. And I bet you, I'll give this plant about three weeks, maybe. It'll to, be a stock. And it'll be nothing. And look at here. So three weeks puts it mid-August. You know, you're, you're targeting mid-September harvest. Um, yeah, it's so, still a month away. So, I mean, there's a whole grain fill period you're going to lose out on. Well, the year I first noticed it, my beans were perfect, and I come back in August, and they were dead. Yep. And yep. I go, whoa. And so, yeah, sudden death syndrome. So, what we've been doing is, uh, our rotation here now where it's real bad, we grow corn, snow, and, and corn. corn. Fair enough. And I found if you feed it with these varieties we have today, if, and with... Uh, this field was just sprayed last Tuesday with Miravis Neon. Neo. Neo. Yep. Uh, for, uh, fung it's a fungicide for diseases and, yes. and leaf diseases and, and fungicide, right? Right, right. It's two, two modes of action. Correct. And uh, we find if you do all those things. It's three actually, sorry. It's three modes of action. It's three modes of action. Well, there you go. I stand corrected. Yep. <laughs> with, if you want to throw the book at them, you can grow, I usually end up 200 plus and it's been corn for a lot of years it's my test plot <laughs> there's a test plot on continuous corn yeah it's a 125 acre test plot fair enough anyway we'll get back on tuesday and uh catch up with you and matt and we'll have a look at the different varieties that day sounds like a good plan. anyway thanks for the time i'm here with matt hoyer from st jenna crop protection uh from Syngenta Seeds. Syngenta yep. Seeds, okay. Yep. And uh, he's gonna, <clears throat> well actually, I better go back up a little bit. At Jackson Seeds, we always have a little uh, day in September where we go over all the products and and bring in a few speakers and talk about some of the agronomic issues that are current to the year. And this year, because of COVID, we're not going to. So I'm gonna try to do a little series on agronomic issues that are going on in uh, our local area and perhaps our customers can view it and it would not be as good as the meal that Burns has always put on for us but uh, you might learn a little bit so Matt's here today how are you Matt? I'm good Dennis <clears throat> and uh, we're here at a field of uh, 20 E3s and maybe Matt, you can tell us a little bit about this variety because I know nothing about this variety. Yeah, for sure. So this is a variety that uh, that we brought through the Sandana screening program and a variety that we're really excited for 2020 with uh, sales for 2021. So it's a group 2.0, it's a 3000 heat unit. And really what I like about this variety is the disease package that comes with it. So from a breeding perspective, Sandana has been really focused on screening for diseases and one of those I'm gonna talk about later is sudden death syndrome. So three key aspects of this variety. So when you think about Phytophthora, we've had the rains here this morning. So on those poorly drained soils, the Phytophthora package is second to none on S23. So you've got uh, an RPS3A gene stack, which is important, one of my favorite genes. And additionally, you also have phenomenal field tolerance. Now. Around this area, Dresden, just south of Dresden and moving towards Chatham, sudden death syndrome, very important. This variety also has excellent sudden death syndrome tolerance. And additionally, you know, nice, nice green deep foliage to this variety, but it has great standability and then fairly good white mold tolerance. So very well rounded and uh, looking forward to performance for the, the 2020 season, Dennis. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. So now I'm here in... Uh this is a Kent Eggs sudden death syndrome plot on my farm actually and Matt is going to explain a little bit to us about sudden death. So this this really is a unique site and uh, this came about over a hockey game a few years back with uh, with Jared and, and John over at Kent Egg just discussing you know where can we put a sudden death syndrome screening site and so that's this is a result of that conversation so um, we've had this site for a number of years, I believe for, for four years now, and this has provided us very good data year in and year out, very uniform site. And, and why this is so important is as we go to commercialize a variety, it's very important that we characterize it properly for sudden death syndrome. So 
Dennis, if you just do a, a pan here around the variety. So it's August 4th and you can see there is very significant sudden death syndrome. And this is a competitor block. Further back is the Syngenta block, a little bit greener. So we've been breeding for quite a few years. So overall with our germplasm, we have fairly good tolerance to sudden death syndrome. Now, as a comparison, if you pan over to the, the left-hand side here, 25 b -sex x runs the, the row of the tree line. Now this is something in the Syngenta portfolio that we characterize at average. You will see sudden death syndrome in it but compared to the competitor block, it's pretty good for overall sudden death syndrome tolerance. So we this will be our third rating at this plot. We'll continue to rate to August and uh, rate these varieties for SDS and then characterize them. Now, one unique thing about this site is as we move trait platforms, so currently we're on the extend trait platform. We're introducing some E3 that have been through this screening as well too and we'll continue to screen the E3 proprietary genetics at this site. So it's important as we move from that extend trait platform to the E3 platform that we maintain that excellent sudden death syndrome tolerance. So I'd just like to thank you this morning for uh, just listening about sudden death syndrome tolerance and wish you all the best as we head towards fall. Thanks, Matt. You're uh, the last time I was out here, I didn't really end that video off. Okay. So I thought it would be good to get back out here today okay. and uh, see how this has advanced. We're probably, what, three weeks from the last time we were out here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So today, Adam's got Bailey with him. You're already filming. <laughs> You're his right-hand man? Because he can't write, probably. That's like <laughs> why. Good we, thing he, you we, got. Uh, we put good emphasis on our summer intern program. So this is uh, Bailey. She's one of our summer interns. Been with us since the spring. So it's kind of nice for Bailey because she helped me plant this site. So uh, she gets to see the full progression and what we're actually trying to accomplish here. So perfect. That's awesome. So tell us about the SDS. What's happened in the last three weeks here? So we've seen a really good progression here, Dennis, of, uh, of the disease. Um, so as you can see, uh, I can't remember what you saw last time, but. I mean, you just look at the overall canopy and overall plot here, and I mean, there's a real telltale sign. Uh, I mean, you look at plants like this, and you're already starting to see premature defoliation. So that plant's on its way to premature death. Um, you know, we do have some variability throughout here, but uh, as you can see, like there's a really good example of how far that disease has progressed in three weeks. So these beans aren't gonna finish they're not going to finish properly. They're going to die down, the beans will be small, misshaped. That's correct. Immature. Yes. yes. And overall less yield, right? So So that brings me to the main reason you're out here. Have you got a chemical that's working? So we've just released and uh, announced the releasement or uh, um, approval of Saltro seed treatment. And so we're really excited about this one. Um, got great potential for the marketplace. Um, as you know, and you've probably heard, we're seeing huge progression of the disease, especially in this area. And so here's a really good opportunity for growers to add a seed treatment to their overall program so that they can then uh, combat disease before kind of getting out of the gates. So it's a really good time to be introducing the product. Uh, we've got good visibility um, and, we've, uh, and it's going to be a, a great opportunity for growers to help combat the disease before it gets really started. And the other thing we can show right here is a, a variety that is uh, resistant, you might say, to sudden death. So there is huge differences in uh, varietal tolerance to SDS. So in this particular plot here, we intentionally used a susceptible variety in order to make sure that we have really good performance with seed treatments. So we want to separate out that genetics versus seed treatment. And there is a combination between the two, of course, but I mean, you look at this variety, and then if you film in behind there and you look at another variety, you can see just the difference in tolerance to sudden death syndrome between here and there. And I should also mention here, uh, what you're seeing here, this is all what we call a check. So none of this has been treated with any kind of seed treatment. Okay. So, so the treated ones are down here? Yeah, so we have the treated ones in here. Uh, we use what we call a paired plot. And now it is hard uh, because right now, um, like the disease is progressing, 
we've seen it progressing kind of prematurely this year or earlier than normal uh, but you do see the variability and what we're doing here is we're taking notes in order to try and accomplish or try to separate out that variability we have a specific design that we use so that we're comparing what we call a check versus an actual treatment versus a check and that's actual design as I understand that Syngenta came up with several years ago and we've been piloting it and really happy with how it turns out so that that way we can kind of separate it some of that variability that might see soil the type or well the biggest uh. thing too to remember is there's a really strong correlation between sudden death syndrome and soybean cyst nematode and there's all kinds of research out there to show the variability in populations of soybean cyst nematode so the reason why we use this particular design is it's intended to make sure that we uh, capture some of that variability so that we have confidence in our data and our growers and customers have confidence in our data as well. So, Perfect. Well, I'm glad I got out here and caught you this morning. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. So this is 25B6X. Yep. And then here, if you look here, this is a another product. Perfect. And it's it's a susceptible variety susceptible variety so so that this shows you the difference that a variety will make and what you're trying to find is a chemical that makes the same difference so if you, you put the two together we should have this disease on the run that's right so I mean there is going to be the, the strong correlation between the genetics and the seed treatments so let's not forget about that one but <clears throat> it does show the difference in varieties here too so but what we are looking for is how do we pull that um, you know a good variety and make it better um, so you know this is extremely susceptible and you can see the difference here too now there is a difference in maturity between the two products we're about half maturity group difference but still you can just even looking at the difference in the beans you can see the difference between that brings me to another point some of these yellowing in the leaves how do you know it isn't uh, drying down very good so if you look really quickly here the telltale sign <clears throat> when you look at these leaves so this is what we call chlorosis and necrosis it's intervenal um, so it is but you do see the yellowing you see the browning the brownings the necrosis um, so growers actually have to physically get out and take a look um, he can't do this with the ADK scouting method. You can't. No, no. We've got to get out of the pickup. You got to get out of the pickup, Dennis. My doors are locked. Well, you're gonna to have to figure out how to unlock them. Use the window because you're gonna to have to figure out exactly what it is. And I mean, there is some questions between SDS and there's another one that's closely related called brown stem rot. And um, you know, the best thing to do in that case, if there is any question, talk to your local seed advisor like Jackson Seeds and get them out. Thank you for the plug. Get them out, have them take a look at your beans and make sure that, uh, just get that second opinion. Um, make sure that they, uh, you do a really good job of identifying it before you wanna make sure you treat it. But um, we do know this is SDS. Uh, we've had the experts out to take a look. We know this field's got a history of it. So what I'm gonna have to do tomorrow when I leave Tim Hortons yes. is actually go to the field mm -hmm. and I'll, uh, I'll maybe, hit my electric door locks yes get out of the pickup get out of the pickup yep. and walk into the field walk in and the look field. and not just the headlands the oh, whole field the whole field yeah the whole hundred acres i gotta get a pair of those slick pants like you got well them. they are kind of slick when you're first thing in the morning here <laughs> it, call this experience but uh, they save it saves your jeans and I mean, saves you from getting soaked in the morning so and i can hear garth brooks in the background can you okay, the thunder that... roars <laughs> Anyway, thanks, Adam. No problem. Thanks for coming out.